Hey guys, you cannot believe where we are. What an amazing mine. Look at that head frame. You don't think I'm happier than a cow in, in slop? <laughs> Gotta try that one again, because cows don't go in slop. So we're out here in Pioche, about 175 miles north of Las Vegas. The town was established in about 1869 after silver had been found in the area a few years earlier. The town, like so many western towns, had been ravaged by fire on a couple of occasions as well as a flood. Many of the mines would bring ore and load it into this hopper, and then the ore would be, be taken by aerial tramway over the hill, down into the valley, to the mill. Now this is the station where each one of the, the ore buckets would be loaded onto the tramway. And this is one of the actual buckets that hauled ore in the 1920s and 1930s. So guys, they're serious about no trespassing. Please don't come up here with the idea of sneaking onto these properties. Isn't that head frame just beautiful? Now this is a three compartment shaft. Two of them were used for uh, materials coming up and down. And the third one was a man lift. Now the interesting thing about the man lift is that it was too high. So they would put on the lower stack as many guys as they could uh, stick in there and then it would drop down about seven feet or six feet however tall that was and then load it up again and it was really cool because this this whole head frame was hot riveted together and that's something that uh, i just think is pretty cool to see if you look at the rivets yeah, you can just see right there where it's all put together and they're hot riveted. Super neat. Hey guys, when we were at the mine, I was able to pick these track stakes up. They're great mementos. We always love having these. They make good paperweights and stuff at the house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give these away to three lucky viewers. So stick around to the end of the video and I will tell you how to enter to win possibly two of these or one of these. So stick around. Here we are in front of some of the most amazing winches I've ever seen. I've seen them in museums, but I don't think I've ever seen them quite like this. Look at that. It's taller than I am. Absolutely amazing. You won't get a chance to see something like this. Just, you don't. Wow. Look at this. Okay, so here we are. Look at those winches. That is stunning. The operator would have sit here, the winch man would have sat right here running both of these winches. Now they had somebody else running the man lift, but they had one operator here running these two massive, massive winches. Holy cow, look at that. And you can see where it had the indicators for how deep each one of the, the um, skips was up, up or down the shaft. And that's how they would have told what level everything's on. And I can see up to level 14. Yep, so here you are. You're now the boss of this mine. Look at that. You got controls for both of them. And that indicator tells you how deep 
that you are in each one of the winches, because there's two winches, they're going to be winching them up separately. And that's going to tell you where your, your cage is. Look at all this stuff. It's just magic stuff. That's so cool. That's how you find she like the fluorescence. Yeah, there's a tattoo of buffalo and uh, Max, and he was down there. Look at the size. where everything is and then we've got a generator oh, well, again, that controls the, the speed that's a, a governor it would make sense because when you have to change out a motor that's the only way here's your young frankenstein switches this is this is where we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, now i guess we can't energize the uh frankenstein monster darn it here I was, all ready to go. My masterpiece. How do you get a chance to see this stuff? What a blessing. Right, I saw that was the foundation was. Oh, look at all that. That would make sense. The, the motor was. <laughs> I think I can take this nut off with this right here. <laughs> that thing is a monster. A monster. Then when you got time, you can. <laughs> That's cool. Yo. So once again, here we are. This is probably the single largest compressor I've ever seen. Look at the size of that. There's the collection tank. There's the main motor. Now that motor is an open winding motor. So it drove both of the wheat, both of the compressors. So just amazing, huge piece of hardware on this massive mine. Now this, <laughs> that's actual. Um, now, if I'm not mistaken, it's the actual piston rod. It comes in, and then it converts circular motion to linear motion, and then that is going to go right on into the compressor unit itself. But look at the diameter of that. That's my hand. Now look at this. The thing that's amazing is this flywheel right here is actually the motor. It's an open winding motor. And that drove this massive compressor that fed right into the, to the tank, the collection tank. And this is a two cylinder compressor. So there's two of these, one here, one on the other side. Now what's amazing is they have a second one of these massive compressors just over on the other side of the room. <laughs> I'm stunned. It would be really easy to get this side Yes! out the operation of the uh, of the motor. But these are massive, massive air compressors. So that's you'll see these in mines all the time. People are like, oh what's that? Big resistor. So there's the grease cups, a couple small ones, and some big ones. The Western House running through these reduction gears. This is spinning. Hey guys look at the size of that head frame. <laughs> Such a neat adventure here. This is one of the, the rare opportunities that we get from time to time 
to go visit someplace really special. And this is one of those locations. Holy cow. Certainly enjoying it. Hope you guys are enjoying it as well. Stick around. <laughs> Holy cow. Getting to see this. It's been locked away so it's preserved. It's gonna be a little dark right here. But oh my gosh, what a, what a treat. This is a dry room. This is where they would have been uh, changing out of their mining clothes and into their street clothes. And that's what all the, when you'll see the baskets up above, those baskets are what they would put their clothes into and they would then pull them up and uh, they would hang from the roof. Now subsequent to that, they've been using this for, for sample storage. You can see samples everywhere. And uh, this is a bit of history. You just don't get a very, very uh, often chance to be able to see stuff like this. So let's just keep on walking until this gets. This was the shower room. This is where all the men would shower. I can imagine that would have been interesting back in the day. And uh, we're back here into the sample room. This is a whole cabinet of those sample pages that they had that from the drills, drill holes they did, they would grind up what they found and then put it onto these sheets with the depth that each one of the minerals was found. The amount of research that went into this was just stunning. Car sample, cut sample, and look at that, a cross book at the fissure. This is from 1929, June of 1929, all handwritten, gives all the breakdowns of all the minerals that they were coming in, whether it's gold, silver, lead, or zinc. This is the level of detail that these guys went to, to keep track of how much that they were, were mining and how much it cost per ounce to mine and whether they were making money or not. I've never seen anything like that. And just a whole wall of these old documents. Just a big old monster ore hopper. Of course they had two shafts going down here or a, a double compartment shaft, then they would have been bringing a lot of ore up. You saw the size of the, uh, the winches. He would have been hauling that stuff off. And they had a mill right there. Unfortunately, the mill had a fire. It just wasn't economically uh, feasible to go ahead and reopen the mine. Otherwise, it might be running today. Now, if we see silver prices go up, absolutely may see this mine open again. So here's all the accompanying buildings. This would have been for just about everything. Some of them are workshops, some of them are offices, just whatever they needed. Goes on all the way around. And this is what the old mines would have looked like. The fortunate thing about this mine is it just hasn't been torn apart. And that's why it's so special to get a chance to come here and see what a mine, an operating mine from the 20s and 30s would look like. So everywhere you look at this mine, there's just all kinds of uh, neat things to look at. But this might have been one of my favorites. It looks like this shop was probably the drill repair shop. So everywhere you look were old drills, jack legs, parts, hoses, just walking around the whole place was super neat. Now it was pretty sketchy because the floor was breaking apart and the whole place was getting ready to probably collapse at some point in time. But I've, I've only ever seen like stuff like this in museums. I've not, I've not actually seen drills uh, in real life where they're just sitting there. So this would have been just a cornucopia of 
pieces and parts to repair the drills. I'll bet they were busy, you know, because of a mindless size, there would have been just a ton of this kind of equipment. And these guys would have been, you know, bringing them in, fixing them, and getting them back underground uh, and into the workings as quickly as they could. And everything looks like it was just left there, like they went home one day and just simply were locked out the next. You can see it's just a, a in essence, a pole barn. It's, it's nothing but uh, timbers and metal uh, tacked to it. So it would have been just colder than cold during the winter because it's pretty high elevation. It's well over 6,000 feet, probably about 7,000 feet up there. So it would have been super cold. But just look at all this. I could spend the day easy just, just poking around in here, playing with all the little bits and pieces and having a great time. Really enjoyed seeing this. This is kind of one of the high points. Um, of course, every place I went was a high point, so I don't, know how to, I don't know how to pick my favorite place. And dynamite boxes put to good use. And look at the size of this lathe. That thing is a monster. So obviously we're in the machine shop. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? Now, any of you guys that like doing doing work, that that right there is a heck of a size vice. Look at the size of the typewriter beside it. That'll give you a feel for how big it is. Look at the size of this massive drill press. Oh, holy cow. Or for my British friends, a pillar drill. So have you ever seen a pipe threader the size of this monster? I haven't. That thing is huge. Yep, and here's another monster lathe. I, this is the first time I've ever seen one like this. And there's yet another one. And look at this. And this was belt driven. So back in the day, everything was driven off big belts. And these have been converted to electric. The size of these these grinders, just everything on a massive scale. Boy, if you love mines, that's a thing of beauty. <laughs> We're having a great time. You might guess. Stuff everywhere. There's the big, big hoppers, medium sized hoppers, conveyor belts every which way. I cannot imagine what this would have been like when it was going. Let's take a walk up these stairs and just see what we might find. I know it's hard to believe, but there might even be people up here. Right here's the furnace. So they would have assayed as they went, probably by batch. Just an amazing place. Look at all of that. Hey, this is the very top of a cone crusher. And what you see as we start going down in here, 
hopefully the uh, the light will work. I'll light this up a little bit. This is the very top. All of this is ore. And then the bigger chunks would have fallen down into the cone crusher. Cone crusher moves. And so as it circulates around, the bigger rocks drop in. And then as the cone comes around, it crushes them and they drop into the next level down. So you can just see how all this ore was just being crushed as that thing goes around. And then it drops into a conveyor belt at a lower level for the next step of processing. So once again, when they didn't have the tool that they need, they made it. So that's like three quarter inch steel. And they put little tangs on it and they got a little arm out there that they'd hit it with a big old hammer. Whatever they were screwing down, that's what they used to do it. Pretty cool. And it all comes out onto this conveyor belt. This conveyor belt goes up to the top of that shaker deck that I showed you earlier. And all the oversized material gets fed onto that secondary belt, which comes into this guy. And it gets re-crushed until it's small enough to go through that shaker deck to go into the conveyor system that leads into the ball mills, which is in the other building. So, and you can see all the dust on the just massive doors on everything. Ooh, spooky in here. Control panels everywhere. Uh, oh yeah. The boys are stealing ore. <laughs> <laughs> you got shale everywhere. See that? It looks like felite. See how shiny that is? Yeah. We call that felite. I'm it's gonna tell mom. <laughs> oh. There you go. Look at that. Big old honk of silver. Okay, so we're getting ready to do a little bit of uh, underground exploration. A little underground action. Ought to be fun. Uh, I've not been in this mine before, so let's go see what we can find. Always a good time when we're under there, right? Here we go. Okay, so we came up from there. Christopher's going to be right in front of me. He's looking for gold. <laughs> Well, let's see what else we can find. Let's just keep walking. Okay. Some shoring in here. A little stope back there. Natural timbers. You see that quite a bit in these areas. If there's, if there's any kind of trees in the area, a lot of times you see where they just strip the bark and uh, Bring them in. Not sure where this goes. Gonna kind of stick my head up here a little bit. Let's see what we find. Stove. Looks like air running down there. Now I'm not gonna give this a real heavy explore because. We're going to be going and grabbing some food here pretty quick and I don't want to get get to be a complete mess like I normally am. Because that's what I do. And uh, we'll see. Of course, I generally can't help myself. I start getting down in these mines. And uh, down in the dirt I go. It's more shoring. Air pipe going up, air pipe going down. I would not be surprised if that doesn't join right back in where we just came from. So let's go find out. Now it's obvious they're chasing, they're chasing ore in this area. Um, it's not, it's not like there's a whole lot of uh, big deposits and stuff. So they're just chasing the ore where they found it. But I want to go down here. So 
some sand stuff. That goes down and down. There's a nice incline. I don't know if I'm gonna have time today to go down there. Um. Oh. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. You're in for a treat. Here we go. It might get a little dirty. I don't care. This is something I'm going to be happy about because you don't really see these all that often. See what we're gonna find. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. I got it. Did you try dumping it? I've not tried dumping it, but the uh but that's open. Did okay. anyone bring oil? There you go. How cool is that? You wanna hop in? I'll give you a ride. <laughs> wow. We'll go back about as far as oh. this. Oh yeah, it's hitting on the uh, the the pipes. <sighs> well, I can't squeeze through there. <laughs> you squeeze this side. And you got rocks on the track anyway. Yeah. That is so cool. I can't imagine moving this thing around all day long. And loaded with tons of ore. Yep. Look at that. Isn't that something? Isn't that pretty? Are you going to operate it, Joanne? I think I'm just going to bring this on the side. Probably for you to ride on. <laughs> uh, we only go a couple feet. Yeah. Oh, I'll clear the track off. Yeah, and we'll go for a ride to that ore pass. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't hear it show. Yeah, look, look at that. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right. We're there you go, son. Now kick the kick the gate, unlock it, and do a tip. There we go. Huh? Beautiful. You can see right where they were chasing, all the way right up here. Right, and this this incline chases this exact this exact layer right here. And I need to see your face this way. Huh? I need to see your face. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, it got me again. You got there, Christopher. Safety for you. Yeah, are you gonna do the safety dance? You sure it's not deck cord? I don't know. All right. <laughs> well, hold still. Okay. My suspicion is it won't. It's starting to fizzle. Is this 42 seconds per? Foot? Right. <laughs> right now it's zero seconds. You're right. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there's one and two. The outer sheet's burning, but I don't think the, I don't think it's fusing. Yeah. <laughs> it should like psh, out the right. end, like a sparkle. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not seeing nothing. The tar's burning. Yeah, the tar's burning. The outside's burning. 
I wonder if the powder is wet because of the moisture in there. Hey guys, now you stuck around and I'm going to reward you. If you'd like to enter to win one of these spikes, what I want you to do is, if you would, share this video. Then what I'd like you to do is go ahead and type the word spike in the comments below. What I'll do is everybody that types the word spike in the comments below will be entered to win. So what I'm going to do is this big one and, and one of the other ones is going to go to first place. Second place, it's going to be two small spikes. And third place is going to be a single spike. So enter and let's see if you win.